Hi, this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and I'm sitting at Tire Tracks right now getting a, a tire fixed, and I'm going to try to record this program here, and I'm sure everyone will be staring at me like I'm crazy, but maybe I am a little crazy. Okay, here we go. The winner of a 300-mile race drove at a rate of 142.289 miles per hour. What was the winner's time? and round the answer to the nearest thousandth. Now, we're looking for the time. This is a rate times distance problem, or if you prefer, a distance rate time problem, which is one of the reasons we call it a dirt problem. Dirt equals D-R-T, distance rate time. And the equation is d distance equals rate times time. All right, they're looking for time. What does that mean? That means they're not looking for distance. This formula is to find distance when you know the rate and you know the time, and we don't know the time. So I'm going to alter this formula, and what I'm going to do is what we call derive a formula from a formula we already have. I'm going to derive a formula for time. All right, so we have distance equals rate times time. What I'm going to do, since rate and time are multiplied, I'm going to divide both sides by the rate, by r, so that the r's over here cancel out, leaving me with t. So now I have a formula, t equals d over r. In other words, time equals distance divided by rate. Now I can do the problem. If time equals distance divided by rate, then all I have to do is say time equals the 300 mile race, so it's 300 miles altogether, divided by the rate of speed of 142.289, and that will give me the hours. Okay, now I'm gonna put that in the graphing calculator, or we don't need a graphing calculator, any scientific calculator will do. 300 divided by 142.289, enter. Okay, and I get T equals 2.1083850. Zero four seven, and it probably goes on from there. Um, the instructions say to round to the nearest thousandth, and that is the third decimal place. So my answer is going to be t equals 2.108. Okay, got it. Let's move on to the next problem, and I'm afraid to look around to watch it, the people watching me. Okay, here we go. The speed of a stream, that is the current, the speed of a stream is two miles per hour. A boat travels seven miles upstream in the same time it takes to travel 11 miles downstream. What is the speed of the boat in still water? Okay, let's read it again. The speed of a stream is two miles per hour. A boat travels seven miles upstream in the same time it takes to travel 11 miles downstream. What is the speed of the boat in still water? <clears throat> I'm going to let x equal the speed of the boat in still water, and what that is is it's just the speed of the boat motor, for instance, without taking the current into effect. Now, the easiest way to do a distance rate time problem is to set up a table like this one, where you have distance, rate, time, upstream, and downstream. Then you just fill in your information. The rate upstream will always be the speed of the boat minus the speed of the current and the speed downstream, the rate of speed downstream, will always be the speed of the boat plus 
the speed of the current. Now, since we don't know the time, and we're told that the times are the same, that means equals, I'm going to have uh, 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 the, the distance divided by the rate, so we'll have 7 divided by x minus 2 here for the time it takes to go upstream 7 miles, and that's equal to the time it takes to go downstream 11 miles, so that's going to be distance divided by rate here, which will be 11, equal, uh, 11 over x plus 2. It's a little distracting to be sitting in a, a, a place, a public place doing this. Uh, but I want to do it. So here I am. All right, we know that the time going upstream equals the time going downstream. So I set up this equation right here. 7 over x minus 2 equals 11 over x plus 2. Now, this is a proportion. Whenever you have one fraction equals one fraction, you have a proportion. And when you have a proportion, you can cross multiply, which makes life much easier. Just multiply along the diagonals. So we'll have 11 times x minus 2 equals 7 times x plus 2. Now just solve the equation for x and you'll have the speed of the boat in still water. Let's, let's do it. 11x minus 22 equals 7x plus 14. I'll subtract 7x from both sides. That'll give me 4x minus 22 equals 14. Now I'll add 22 over to the other side. Plus 22 plus 22. And I'll continue the equation over here on the right. I'll have 4x equals 36. Then I'll divide both sides by 4, and I'll get x equals 9. So our boat travels at 9 miles per hour, or is it kilometers per hour? Uh, let's say miles per hour, mph. The important thing here is the number 9, which is your answer. Okay, talk to you later.